Good day, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Ramble Shrapnel, the little bits and pieces of the main episodes. And today we're going to be talking about the folklore episode or expanding upon it. And the topic that we have for today was suggested by Not a Nerd, who joined us for that main episode as well. This topic is one that I think everybody will love and everybody can talk about at least to a little bit extent. But Mackie and I have done quite a lot of research about this in the past and especially because of the fact that I am actually an an archaeologist and a historian, I've done very extensive research about this in the past. And the topic that we're talking about is vampires. I love Oof, this that build up was an attack that build up was so like I was like saying, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um I'm not gonna add or maybe I can add a little bit of dubstep so that there's a bit of a drop <laughs> in there. But maybe not. Um so why are you excited about talking about this? Well vampires wait, has always been wait like just a second. Everybody were joined once again by Mackie, my stupendous co-host um i didn't build you up there the stupendous the magnificent the munificent and all empowered mackie and yes folks if you want this kind of wacky broken up structure style that we have and are so unique to have you must definitely uh, subscribe to our our other podcast ramble shamble <laughs> well, I guess, no, no, I, guess so... <laughs> I guess technically it's the same podcast, just like different playlists or something. Exactly, exactly. No, um, vampires have always been such a really interesting topic, and how the evolution of what the vampire used to be to what it is now considered to be is something that is worth noting. So this topic I- I'm actually very excited to touch on, and I'm sure you as a historian know quite a bit of history behind it where um, I-, I clearly do not know. I know the bare base, or well, not the basics of history, but I know some things about vampires that might have uh, evolved to what the c- common millennial might think of vampires now t- in the nowadays. Yeah, so I can tell you that Vampires penetrated into pop culture around about the time that, well, not around about the time, um, it's it got into pop culture when it was written about by Bram Stoker. And he is the guy who wrote about Dracula. Now, he wrote about Dracula kind of in a similar, well, there was like a gathering of different writers. It was... Bram Stoker, Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein, and I think a a few others. Frodo Baggins, Gandalf the Grey, I wish, I wish. (laughs) (laughs) So Bram Stoker wrote the story of Dracula around the end of the 19th century, so like 1890-something. And it was a very different version of a vampire than we see nowadays. But anybody can read up about this work, you know, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And the reason why his Dracula was very different was because it didn't have a lot of the associated lore that we have nowadays about vampires. All that Dracula could do, really, was he could defy gravity to a limited extent and he had superhuman agility and this you're going to love Mackie he was able to <laughs> climb vertical surfaces upside down almost like a reptile <laughs> oh Spider-Man yeah oh Spider-Man <laughs> yeah true so he's not like the original Spider-Man but we can probably say that Spider-Man might have cribbed a little bit from the vampire folklore or from the Dracula story. But um, he could tr- also travel onto unhallowed ground, so like unholy ground, such as graves of suicide victims and his own victims. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I think it's almost like teleporting or something. 
So I think he got like kind of a power buff whenever he was on unhallowed ground. Hmm. But there wasn't really anything about him not going, being able to go into a church or something. And he had very powerful hypnotic, telepathic, and illusory abilities. So there wasn't really anything about like garlic being bad for him or him <laughs> being burned if you showed a cross to him or something like that. That's all later stuff. If you said that to Bram Stokula, uh, Bram Stoker, not Bram Stokula, um, Stokula. <laughs> he, he, he would have probably have laughed at you for suggesting that something like a cross can. Or slap you in the face for calling him Stokula. Oh yeah, Stokula. <laughs> Stokula is I, quite a cool word though. I will say that, like, that should be our new word for like, oh, that's a Stoke? Like, yeah. oh, that's Stokula, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Make sure you're Stokula. Come on. Get hype. Get hype. <laughs> that's going to be our new word. I like it. I like that. Yeah, no, but to, ca- to go on there, it is definitely one of the first things that come to my mind, maybe because I'm a bit of the older generation, that if you t- say vampire, the first thing that goes into my mind is Dracula. And he's such an iconic vampire. But it would be such a weird thing for like the more... Uh, younger generation where they don't they don't even know what a typewriter is and when you say like vampire probably the first thing they think of is edward from vampire diaries is it vampire diaries oh man i'm glad i forgot yep. the name twilight twilight um, but the, i think there is also a, 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 edward a series and vampire vamp- diaries as well yeah where the vampire is like this amazing pretty boy that gl- glows and glamours can grow out in sunlight has no problem with sunlight but they just like they stand out like a sore thumb and then he's kind of vampire vegan where he only eats animals and doesn't eat the blood of people but the like th- that generation of vampires really became like the worst for me like i stopped liking vampires in general but when i started liking them again was funny enough Hot- hotel transylvania um oh yeah because because in one of those movies where you mentioned the fact that like garlic was uh, never used as a weapon against vampires, you see in, like in that movie specifically like garlic doesn't it's not doesn't kill them it just gives them incredibly bad gas like makes them want to fart, <laughs> and I, I just love how that like manipulation to like still kept with the fact like look uh, like that vampire is like the guys if you want to. Know what Dracula is? Hotel Transylvania. Pretty nails it on the head there. He can climb walls, levitate, mind control, morph himself into different things. But the fact that like garlic or like wooden stakes doesn't necessarily kill him, it just like affects him in stupid ways, like makes him want to fart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. But I think vampires go even further back, like way, way back. Oh, hundred percent. Um, it came from. Greek and Roman legends of something called the Strix, which was kind of a a bird, which was a ill omen. And it's also fed on human blood and flesh. But we would call them vampires, but the name for them in those times was a Strix. And then later, that kind of got transplanted into Slavic and Romanian, and specifically Transylvanian, because I, th- I think Transylvania mm. is like an area in Romania. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the Strix got transplanted into what is called a Strigoi. And Strigoi were kind of like zombies, really. Like they were slow mm. and lethargic during the day. But during the nighttime, they got like super amp- active and amped up and just like, like totally, dying lights <laughs> yeah exactly they were basically zombies and so yeah they were overpowered during nighttime and their abilities were that they had superhuman speed and strength they could shape shift they were immortal they could astral project so like send your spirit out of your body mm-hmm. and they could make themselves invisible apparently to become a strigoi one had to A, commit suicide, B, be cursed by a witch, C, 
be born with the extra nipple or tail. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, just be like an absolute sinner, like just be the most <laughs> evil person. Die alone or be unseen or be born as the seventh son of a seventh son or the seventh daughter of a seventh daughter. That's just like got to do with number beliefs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Be born as a child out of marriage. Be born too early. Die before you're baptized <laughs> or if you are bitten by a street boy. So there's like a ton of ways that you could become it as well. But I guess the one thing that was transplanted onto modern folklore is that if you get bitten. It's, it's such an interesting thing that like how I can imagine like the parents just at randomly adding scare facts to like tell the kids yeah. not to do A, B, C, D, F, G. Like you shouldn't have seven children. Why? Um, um, because it will turn into a vampire. Yeah. Like, oh crap. Okay. I'm not doing that. It's like one of the modern things is that like vampires can't enter a house without being invited into. Yeah. And I can just imagine like kids normally having their windows wide open, letting some fresh air in during the night. And now they're completely freaking the crap out to the point where the parents like say, shut up. Don't worry. If the vampire comes there, just say, go away. I'm going to bed. It won't come inside unless you invite it inside. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, well, that's an interesting one. But really. what what do you think? Like, because Batman, and I'm sorry to go, but into like the superheroes thing yeah. is often compared to be a, a com or often viewed as ba as a vampire. Obviously, he has no vampire powers, but uh, entities that come across him like the first time in the comic books would always like assume he's a proper vampire and it's just a, a very interesting like way of thinking that seeing batman as a vampire and he has pretty much all the th aspects of a vampire except he doesn't have the powers behind it because he uses darkness to his advantage he has those gadgets that make it seem like he can fly and glide and all that kind of stuff um just interesting to think like is batman a version of a vampire but obviously doesn't drink the blood so is drinking blood a requirement? I believe so. So does Mosquito count as a vampire then? <laughs> well, I guess you have to be a sentient creature of some kind. But maybe if there was like a Mosquito man, he would technically also be a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> I could definitely oh, see no. that being a thing. Like in Saitam, uh, One Punch Man where he had to fight that Mosquito Queen. Oh yeah. Is she a vampire? <laughs> yeah, definitely. 100% dude. <laughs> <laughs> but um one interesting thing that i that we read about being a strigoi um the seventh son of a seventh son i'm actually surprised that that's one of the origins because according to most other european legends the seventh son of a seventh son is meant to be like um lucky or yeah good, isn't it's it? meant to be a person who has basically special supernatural powers because mm. it, it it has something to do with like Christ, Christian beliefs where seven times by three is the holy number of God. So the more generations you have of having the seventh child basically makes you more divine or brings you closer to the spirit world. And that's where that is meant to come from because of that whole long history of seven being a holy number and a, like a mystical number and all of that stuff. So like in, in Ireland, for example, those seven sons of seven sons were healers. Um, <laughs> but, but it's got all sorts of things. Okay, well, I think that in Romania, they are meant to be doomed to be a vampire. But like there's all sorts of awesome stuff in Italy where a seventh son of a seventh son could like control snakes and would be immune to snake ve venom and things like that. So I'm actually surprised that Romania just like did a complete 180 on that. Well, I think it's mainly because like listening to that list of where you say that you'll become a vampire if you die alone or commit suicide, it, f it feels like a very much like a, gov a government or a controlling party trying to dictate or try to put a scare tactic on to people who are less educated to 
conform to certain ways and like China who have like a number of child children you allowed to have restriction I think Romania had something similar where they said okay guys uh the peasants are dying of starvation. What What's the main issue? It's like, oh, well, because they all have like nine kids and can't <laughs> keep up with the demand. So, okay, guys, then just put a scare tack in them. It's like, reduce that nine to six or something. Okay, but what do we tell them? Tell the seventh son or daughter gets your va- make, becomes a vampire. It's a bad omen, omen. You will lose your farm, your money, whatever. Just stick to it. And then yeah. they just use a scare tactic to like reduce that size. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, I think that they basically just took all the kind of things that are taboo. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, geez, that that list was so extensive, dude. It's like but die that's what before I'm saying. you're baptized. <laughs> if you're born too early, child born out of marriage, so you know don't have sex before you're married. Um, if you're too sinful, well. They just threw everything there, but it's actually yeah. They just like said, <laughs> but it actually doesn't even surprise me because all of those Slavic myths are so weird. It's like um, if you watch The Witcher, then mm-hmm. those Kikimora, which are like um, that spider creature that attacked Geralt in the series, but is also oh, like yes, a, yes, yes. a spidery thing in the games as well. That's meant to be like women who wandered in the woods and drowned or something. If, you, <laughs> if you're just like such an unlucky person, then you become a Kikimora <laughs> as well. Like they, <laughs> they have the weirdest creatures there. It's like, oh darn, if I listen to my grandmother's warnings about not, getting, not drinking alcohol at past 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. in the evening then i wouldn't have been involved in the situation yeah if i didn't if i didn't do that i wouldn't have wandered buck naked into the woods and drowned (laughs) but then that's another thing is that i feel like those tactics work so well for the younger generation but when they get to the teenage generation where they like to like say i know my parents didn't say i should invite this stranger into my room but he's visiting me like every day for the last like three years and we haven't we started chatting sharing life stories and etc i'm gonna fight this person to my window and then we're gonna have a nice chat in my room huh. <laughs> yeah but there there is one little bit of uh strigoi law that i think is actually really really cool and that i don't really think is touched on by other vampire um like archetypes and that's that Strigoi can actually be people who are alive as well um, because they can be either witches or sorcerers with magical powers. And because of that fact, male Strigoi can actually have children. And you can have half vampires, which are called dampiers. And they're, they're basically... <laughs> dampiers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're basically human, but they're super strong and super fast. So it's like if you day wanted... Walker. Yeah, exactly. A daywalker. So it's basically Blade fr- mm. from the Marvel comics. <laughs> I mean, that's so awesome. It's like you're super strong. You're super fast. You've got Super some, sexy. Super sexy. You're just like rippling with muscles. Absolutely <laughs> shredded. And... You've got a good handful of the telepathic powers and stuff as well. Except sunlight doesn't burn you. I mean, what yeah. else could you ask for? That's like the perfect superhuman. You know? Basically. Yeah. Yeah. But that's about all that we have time for today, everybody. We hope that you found that interesting. Uh, even though we did go on quite a few tangents. But you guys know us by now. What else did you expect? Um, and Mackie, where can they find us? So guys, we have a lot of different social medias. You probably have heard this, me or Yotan mention this a number of times, but we want to keep reinforcing the idea because we want to see the community grow. So again, we have a YouTube channel. We are on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We have, uh, I think we have an Instagram. I'm pretty sure we have an Instagram. Yep. 
BC confirmed by Yoten. We also, uh, on our YouTube, we really do appreciate you guys subscribing, hitting that like button, leaving us some comments, maybe some ideas, some suggestions, and a number of other things that come in handy. But the most important social media platform that you can join us through Discord or through the links in the descriptions is our Discord channel called Ramble Shamble Discord channel. And we hope that you guys come join in and grow the community in that channel. Very briefly, we cover games, we cover topics, uh, podcast discussions. We'd love to see you guys' artworks. We'd love to have a chat, play some games. And in general, make a community that is collaborative and hopefully grow at, to something that we can call at one stage a very fun and engaging engaging community. So, guys, there's no, there's no time like the present. Go join our uh, Discord channel. If you have any problems, you must can give us a shout. But again, thank you again for joining us here on Ramble Shrapnel, uh, where we had a little bit of a sliver from the main episode that relates to this one um, about folklore creatures. And if you guys didn't listen to that one, then you can find the link in the description of YouTube. Otherwise, you might have to do a little bit of searching if you're looking on another platform. But yes, thank you for joining us and we will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye bye.